I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. Hi there, I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about She Said She Doesn't Miss Me or Love Me. Oh. Harsh. Harsh words to hear. Yes. And sometimes you're going to find yourself in a situation where your ex is telling you something that cruel. Now, sometimes we can be a really good partner and have somebody say those things to us. And sometimes we could be, mm, let's say, less than ideal as a partner. Yes. And, you know, it could be a real wake-up call when somebody is breaking up with you and saying, look at what you've done to me. And I get people all the time that have massive amounts of guilt when reality sets in of how they treated their partner. Yes. Okay. Not everybody is going to be on this level. Certain people just have repeatedly mistreated a partner over mm -hmm. and over again. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize it until it's way too late. Right. So I've got a really difficult email to get through today. And this is from a guy in his early 40s that was dating a woman in the 30s for almost five years. And they were engaged. That's a long time. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead and start with the text message the day after the breakup. And this is what he started with. She said, You think people should just be together because they have nothing better to do. You not only have said hurtful things over the course of our relationship, you have done really hurtful things. I have felt used and taken advantage of and walked on. Wow. To be honest, I feel like I'm taking care of a teenager rather than having a partner. The last two years or so, your video game addiction and anger and selfishness and temper have completely shut me out. You started treating time with me like a chore. If I wanted to do something, it was met with an attitude, especially if it was something you weren't very interested in. Once hooked on that stupid game, you didn't want to do anything else. Only recently did you start taking my son to play basketball. But the last two and a half years wasn't always the case. He would come over and go straight to his room and you would play the game and your son would just be shut in his room all weekend. And homework time doesn't count. That's not fun for kids. I know how I felt pushed aside and unimportant. Wow. This is brutal. I mean, this is really brutal what she's telling him, but not as bad as how he treated her, right. right? And the sad part is that you could never think of how else you could be spending your time. Why? Because you didn't enjoy spending time with me. I wasn't an adrenaline rush for you. I wasn't exciting or competitive. So when you put down the controller, you would act miserable and stare off into space and roll your eyes and say sarcastic remarks like, is this what you wanted to do? What did you want to do that I had to get off the game? And make me feel bad for actually wanting to spend time with you. I've never been with someone who actually made the person they supposedly care about feel bad for wanting to be around them. So to deal with it, I pulled away. That alone made me feel unloved and not valued. 
Have you ever heard someone as well, articulately? No, I was going to say she's done this extremely articulately, and I have a feeling this has been a long time coming. Um, that she's had plenty of time to put words to this, and she knows exactly what she has to say. You also get the feeling she said it to him before and got no response. I agree with that. Yeah. Then, it goes on, then there's the selfishness. One of the things that made me realize you were not ready to be a husband is while you sat on your ass playing video games while I was sick with the flu and had a fever and had to pack boxes to move. I was so disgusted and disappointed. A man is supposed to take care of his woman. And you sat there and watched me struggle and only offered to help when I was on the last drawer of the last box. Wow. A real man would have said, Babe, go lay down. I got this. Not you. You only packed your clothes and made me pack everything else, citing, Well, it's not my stuff. Childish and selfish. Right then, at that moment, I knew I was alone. That I didn't have a partner. That I had a dependent and the realization has only been validated time after time after time. Your selfishness made me feel so alone, and your words made me feel unloved. I do not believe you can fix all of those things, and I'm going through the heartbreak of letting you try. If my feelings were important to you, you would have made changes, when those behaviors were brought to your attention. But I never even got apologies from you, let alone any change. Why? Because your ego is so big, you would have to admit you were wrong, and you could never be wrong. Oh my. That is probably the most brutal <laughs> message I have ever read. And how can you not feel for her yes, you more do. than him. Even though you feel like he's listening to all this brutal stuff when she catalogs what he did to her. And it sounds like he just said, well, that's not important. I'm so wonderful, you'll stay with me. Mm-hmm. Right. That was rough. Wow. She, he goes on to say, in early March, the day after the breakup, I cried, begged, and pleaded my case. When I saw that it wasn't working, I respected her request packed my stuff, and left. Later that night, I could not stop texting her. She finally called me the next day and told me she needed time and space. The day after was the last time I spoke to her. Towards the end of April, I broke no contact and sent a message, basically showing her that I empathize with her pain and hurt. Towards the end of the month, we talked in person for the first time in close to 60 days. She told me during this time she didn't miss me and she no longer loved me anymore. Wow. I begged and I tried to plead my case for a second chance, but she said she no longer wanted me back. And it will take years to undo the emotional damage that I did. I, I would agree. Ugh. That is horrible. How did he respond to that? Um, he didn't say. What he goes on to say is the biggest reason she broke up with him was my ego, pride, selfishness, negligence, temper, anger, spitefulness, and arrogance. Now what's the real reason? <laughs> my lord, what a catalog. Yeah. Yeah. She said she resented me, no longer loved me, and doesn't miss me. She canceled our wedding that was supposed to be towards the end of the year. I am completely devastated. Which really was like, you're completely devastated? You're the one that did all these terrible things. She told me never to call or text her again. I have lost all hope. Is there any chance this relationship can be salvaged? I don't know if the relationship can be salvaged, but he can be salvaged if he has learned some things from this. Yeah. yeah. 
I would say that the chances of her changing yeah. her mind are very slim. I never saw anybody have it better thought out in my life. No. I wouldn't be surprised if she works as a writer. <laughs> it's extremely clear. In detailed form, and how can you refute any of it? You can't. It's, yeah. I mean... You'd have to say I didn't do those things, but she already knows you did. Yeah. I think the likelihood of this situation turning around is slim. Yeah, but I don't want him to disturb, despair of himself as a human being. He could get into therapy and say, these are the things that were said to me. I don't know if I own them or not, maybe at the beginning of therapy. But I think she was saying he doesn't own anything he does and nothing is his responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that she was privileged just to live with him. I mean, I think we could easily hazard a diagnosis. And at least the trait, he certainly seems quite narcissistic. And that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I kind of thought about what to title this video, and one of the things that was going through my mind is, are you narcissistic? Here's what you never want to say to you, very well said. Yeah, this is what you want to avoid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she listed each and every verb and adjective. In detailed form. Yeah. And, I mean, how can you say anything but, wow. Yeah, um, well, that's what we said, wow. I... Yeah, I mean, for, for him, what is he going to say to this other than, yeah. you're right, I did do those things, and how could I ever blame you for not wanting to be with me? But I doubt if he said that. See, if he did say that, there might be a crack in the door. But if he said anything that made him own his behavior, the, and this is somebody, it sounds like, who fought the good fight to stay with him. We're talking five years here. Mm -hmm. So she must have cared for him at some point. Sure. But if he could say to her, yes, I've been a selfish fool, thank you for pointing it out to me. And he said that he did send her a message about how he empathized with the situation. But after he hadn't for five years, yeah. it was impossible to sell that one. I'm sure it was uh, not nearly enough no. to undo all of this damage. No, at least he had figured out intellectually what he would have needed to do but you can't go back and do five years. In five years, you didn't get any of this. Mm -hmm. so. You know, if, if you're in a situation like this and somebody says they don't want to be with you, you have to respect it. I mean, honestly, you have to take a look at your behavior and imagine how you would feel if somebody did these things to you. I mean... I think he's just now thinking about that. Sorry. I'm sorry for him as well. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for both of them. I think she has a lot of healing to do, and I think he has a lot of coming to terms with reality to do. Mm -hmm. But I don't want him to write himself off as a human being. No, no. And, and he shouldn't. No. And if you made these mistakes, and you've made similar to mistakes to your partner, it doesn't ma it mean you can't work on yourself and grow and learn from it. Right. I mean, you're, you're going to have a consequence you have to deal with it just like an adult does, right? That's the consequence right. is that you mistreated your partner repeatedly and consistently for a very long time, and they don't have to forgive you. No, they don't. Um, they don't have to give you another chance. And she said to him, it's like having another adolescent, complete with the eye roll, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. I mean, you, you can't make her the priority at this point. No. You have to let her go. Yeah. And if she decides she wants to try and work it out with you, then, you know, you'll have an opportunity. But, you know, she's so hurt by what you said and what you did that she says she resents you. Well, she felt unloved and consequently probably unlovable after living with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know... She's basically kind of saying you emotionally abused her. That's what she's saying. In spades. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't come out and say the word emotionally abused me, but, you know, she's saying it's going to take years to undo the damage. To undo the damage. And, you know, my guess would be that you grew up in a home where somebody treated you like this. Of course. It doesn't come out of the nowhere into the here. And... Um, you're badly injured from that, and the only response you have is to, in turn, treat people the same way again. Mm -hmm. But you have to, I think the difference between an adolescent and a grown-up 
is that grown-ups own their behavior, and he has not. Yeah. He couldn't admit he was wrong, ever. No. And it's not like you can just reach out to her and own up for it now, because she said, don't ever call me or text me again. He's got to let it go. You have to. Yeah. Um, I'm f and who knows? She sounds like a nice woman who did at one point care about him. Yes, yeah. she really did. And I think the biggest thing is she just finally felt like, you know what? He's not going to change. Right. And going back and trying to plead with her and say, I've changed, I've changed, she's not going to buy it. Well, yeah. Um, and uh, the flu. She was dying of the flu. If you've had the flu recently, you know what that feels like. And she packed the whole house to move. And he packed one thing at the end. And yeah, and then said, it's not my stuff. It hurts. Yeah, it, it really hurts. Yeah. That was the last straw, I believe. I think the flu and packing the whole house was the, the last straw. And I think if you continued to reach out or pursue this, it would only prove to her even more how selfish you are. Right. right? Because you're continuing to disrespect what she wants, what she needs, her emotional health, and her healing process if you continue to go forward. So the right thing for him to do is to man up, admit he can make mistakes and, and find a therapist who knows how to handle narcissistic traits. I'm not making it as a diagnosis, just traits. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sometimes a blindness that isn't entirely your fault on feeling other people's feelings. And no, you're not a bad person if you make a mistake. We all do it regularly. Mm -hmm. I've done it three times today. How about you? No, oh, I'm perfect. I know, I forgot about that. Yeah, you are. <laughs> All right. This is a tough one. Yes, it it's, is. It was hard to read that because yeah. it, if I feel for her, I, I feel yes. bad that he's hurting, but... I feel bad that he's hurting too, but he's got to own it. And, and you know, this girl, she deserves to um, have her decision respected. Yes. And I think you have to let her go. And I, I get the sense that he wants to do right now. And that would be to let her go. Who knows what the fates have in mind. But let her go and work on yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. You made mistakes. Now you have to learn from it. Yeah. And I know a lot of people may feel like the need to beat up on this guy in the comment section. No. But, you know, he had the courage to email this and yeah. share this and to say, okay, I... I I've got to do something about this. I did, do, but I did do this. He's owning it mm -hmm. to his credit. Uh, but yes, he's enough to me. How come you didn't know this was a, for, a problem a year ago, two years ago, four years ago? Um, and there's no answer. Um, so, so you've got to yeah. make this about yourself and making this about your journey and, yeah. and working through the issues that you have and not about her. And, you know, there's a way somehow you can't make reparations to her, but you somehow can by becoming a healthier person and, and being better in the universe when you get done. Absolutely. Um, yeah. All right. Tough one. Very tough one. So, if you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, AskCraig.net, sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype coaching. If you got to get with me right away, I do offer emergency Skype coaching. Margaret is also available for Skype coaching. Feel free to sign up with me. I would love to talk with you. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. Hi, I'm Coach Margaret, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist with 35 years experience. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me to get professional help on your situation. Go to askcraig.net to sign up for a personal coaching with me.